doubling down. There's not one but two nano tyrannus species now. The original, nano tyrannosaurus lancensis, and the new one, nano tyrannus lathaeus. And amazingly, I did not see that coming. I was excited about this paper. Nano tyrannus has been controversial since its beginnings. Uh, Gilmore, 1946, named it Gorgosaurus lancensis. And I wonder if his worldview prevented him from naming it a new genus back then. But either way, that's where things sat until 60, I think it was 65 with Roz Dezdevsky, apologies if I botched it, who suggested it could actually be a T-Rex. And in 1988, Bacher, Williams, and Curry said, no, nope, it is not T-Rex. It has a bunch of characters that make it an adult. This is its own Nano Tyrannus. What a great name. And that was cool until 92 when Carpenter came along and said, no, it's, it could be a juvenile Rex. And then in 99, Carr's paper that said, nope, Nano Tyrannus is part of Tyrannosaurus Rex. It is a, a teenager minus. It is part of the growth series. And that was an amazing statement because he took one of the most beloved other animals that was known to be a predator in the late Cretaceous of Northwestern North America and made it part of T-Rex, which then meant that T-Rex was the dominant predator from small to large and no other critters were out there fighting with it. And so that didn't make any sense to a lot of folks, but that's the result that they came up with. In 2001, Jane was discovered, and this is a skull that's very similar looking to Nanotyrannus, as well as postcrania. And it was said, look, Carr was right. It's a juvenile T-Rex. This is great. This matches what we expected to find. And subsequent researchers like Brochu in 03 agreed as well, and Holtz in 04, though Curry in 03 said, that teeth is, the teeth are way different. How do you go from 17 to 12? No other dinosaurs do this. We have juvenile tarbosaurs and displetosaurs and adults, and they look pretty similar. In 2004, Carr and Williamson published their growth stages and made Dana Tyranna stage two. And that's where things sat until 2013 when Larson, who had been, he's been working, he's a commercial collector, who's been working in Northwestern United States, for his entire life and worked on the dueling dinosaurs and he brought a lot of characters to the table he wrote a paper on it and did a publication at svp where a poster where he showed that nano tyrannus's arm is in absolute terms longer than a tyrannosaurus rex arm okay that doesn't make any sense you have to shrink the bone animals grow allometrically with different proportions but they don't shrink bones they just grow the rest larger and yet that's one of the things you'd have to do he pointed it out all of the fusion in the vertebrae on the dueling dinosaur specimen and he pointed out how this fusion is indicative of it being an adult or right up to the cusp of being an adult and as a result the juvenile if it was a teenage t-rex it shouldn't be fused at all because it's got eight to nine times that sized animal's growth left to be doing in a short amount of time. So very interesting arguments. He pointed out the differences in the teeth, in the dentary, in the maxilla, all kinds of great things. And in my opinion, it should have ended there. His arguments are very persuasive, but I think that politics engaged. And as a result, he was uh, passed by and, and mostly ignored. Though if you get a chance to see his YouTube video, it's wonderful. Jeff Nakar and Zano in 2021, post an abstract up at SVP where they said that they couldn't make Jane fit in with the growth series of Tyrannosaurus Rex. Well, this is a problem because it should slot in a certain area. And Longrich and Cita came through in 2024 with a huge paper that documented multiple lines of evidence why Nanotyrannus is distinct. One of them being growth rates. And they put this beautiful growth rate curve together, which Zano and Napoli have their own growth rate curve, but my goodness, are they pretty much the same thing. And Zano and Napoli note that the arm is wildly different in Nanotrannus versus Tyrannosaurus, echoing Larson's 2013 work. Uh, they point out the teeth are different, along which would Longrich and Larson do as well. So what you have is science in action. You've got search, Gilmore 46, and then research as we battle back and forth. We hit a stasis point with car 99 minus some outside voices. And now in the 2020s, you've got these papers coming across reinforcing each other's results because new material was found. The dueling dinosaurs, which is now 
I'm going to call it Warhammer or 40K because its specimen number is 40,000. This specimen has the tail, which we've never had before. It's got the forelimb in nice position. It allows us to do comparison with other nanomaterial as well as T-Rex proper. And it was the other nanomaterial that surprised me. Longer society suggested that dueling dinosaurs could be Stygivenator, which is a, a skull that hangs out in Los Angeles. It wasn't found there, but that's where it exists now. And Xano and Napoli say Stygivenator is a Gnomum dubium, but that skull Jane that looks like it, that is its own species, Nanotyrannus lithium. It's referencing the River Leith, and I may have said that wrong, my apologies. And the River Leith was a river that makes you forget. If you've uh, listened to some of my off commentary, I often mention people go across the river to relief because they don't remember what they just told me. And they're saying we need to forget all of the stuff Nanotyrannus has about it um, in terms of being a teenage T-Rex. And Nan Tyrannosaurus rex is the most studied dinosaur. Heck, it might be the most studied vertebrate outside of humans and anything that makes humans money in the animal world today. And a lot of that thought about biogeography, about um, e the niches that all these animals lived in, predator diversity, have been colored by the 1999 paper that suggested that Nanotyrannus was but a teenager. And for the most part, that was accepted. There were these outlying voices that have been pointing out, look at the bones, don't look at a cladogram. And what's great is that Longridge found 70 some characters that were different between the two. Xano and Napoli echo that. They take out 13 specific characters, showing 12 of them appear across all the Tyrannosaurs. The other one is homoplastic, and they can't find a single character that unites what we would call a synapomorphy, Tyrannosaurs and Nanotyrannus. The end result is Nanotyrannus is here to say, I'm sure the Nano is Teen T-Rex territory camp will have something to say, but I'm not really sure what they can bring to the table because the histological work that was done with Longrich and Saida and Zano and Napoli certainly show that though the EFS isn't there, it is right up to the top of that classic marker showing what is going to be stopped growing. And their projections both have this thing around a thousand kilograms or less, 2,000 pounds, substantially lighter than a T-Rex. The many, many characters that are different between the two, they're, they're just, they're insurmountable. Bakker and crew, they argued that Nanotrannus was not a Tyrannosaurus id. It was outside of the Tyrannosauridae. And subsequent authors who agree that Nanotrannus was its own thing found the same. And Xano and Napoli confirm Longrich and Saida, as well as Larson, as well as Bakker, Williams, and Curry, that the Nanotyrannus is not part of the immediate Tyrannosauridae, and they put it in its own family. I'm Dr. Brian Curtis with Fossil Crate saying thank you kindly. Adios.